Hi, thank you for clicking on the video and I hope everyone is doing really well. There are so many thoughts that an eating disorder will put in your mind when you are contemplating choosing recovery or when you are already in recovery. We tell ourselves so many things to try and talk ourselves out of it. It's important to hear both sides before making a decision about recovery. But most importantly, it's important to choose recovery despite the excuses. Here are just a few of the excuses that people who suffer from an eating disorder might tell themselves to try and talk themselves out of recovery. And a lot of these are the excuses that I still tell myself sometimes when it just feels like recovery is, is not going the way I had planned it to go. And these thoughts come into my mind and at the time, it sounds like a good idea to just give up because these excuses just make so much sense, but honestly, you have to step outside the excuse and realize how absurd they sound. And I do want to say that some of these excuses might sound totally strange and crazy to a person who doesn't have an eating disorder, but you need to keep in mind when you are suffering from an eating disorder, you're not thinking straight in the first place. So these excuses actually, strange enough, make total sense to the person who is having the thoughts. So in other words, these thoughts make complete sense to the person thinking them. So here they are. First off, you're not that bad or you're not really sick. Eating disorders make you compare yourself to other people. And you might see, you know, a celebrity or a YouTuber or just a person on the street who is clearly malnourished and not taking care of themselves and the eating disorder will put a thought in your mind like you're not as bad as that person you're not as sick as that person or you're not sick at all because look at that person look how messed up they are and look how not messed up you are and the eating disorder will use those thoughts as a way to convince you not to recover it's too hard and you're too weak basically the eating disorder is breaking you down slowly in all senses of the word. It is breaking you down emotionally, physically, mentally, and it is making you feel like you are this big and you're not capable of taking care of yourself. You're not capable of recovering. And so it will basically beat you down with your own thoughts. And it's hard to then trust your own thoughts and separate your thoughts from the eating disorders thoughts you're going to mess up and resort back to the eating disorder behavior so why try in the first place there were so many times where i thought i had chosen recovery but looking back now i really hadn't made that conscious decision to recover and one of the main reasons was I always had this fear of failure and surprisingly enough that is where the eating disorder stems from for me at least that's one of the causes of the eating disorder is this strive for perfection to always get things right so in my mind it was if I'm going to do recovery I have to do it perfectly and I can't mess up. There's no room for error. And recovery is about realizing that there is going to be error. There are going to be mistakes made. And it's about accepting the fact that you're going to mess up and it's okay. You just start over. You know, the next day you hit the reset button and you say, I'm starting over. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to make it one day and that's it. And the big thing that would go through my mind is this very excuse of you're going to mess up so why even try in the first place recovery means getting fat and of course the big fear of like the reason why eating disorders are so strong is there's this huge fear of gaining weight and so it if you don't have the eating disorder what is the opposite of the eating disorder the opposite is being fat is being obese when you have an eating disorder there is no gray area there is no middle ground you either are sick with an eating disorder you're you know sickly skinny or you are fat and there is no average there is no in between and so when you're thinking of recovering 
your mind automatically jumps to the other extreme and if I eat food I'm going to get fat and recovery is about eating food when that's a very watered down explanation of recovery that's not what recovery is recovery is not just eating food it goes a lot deeper but because an eating disorder comes from a very superficial place the excuses it will give you will also be very superficial I won't be able to accept my body and I won't like myself the issue with this excuse is even with the eating disorder, you probably don't like yourself anyway. A lot of the time, an eating disorder will come from a very innocent place. Maybe a person just wants to get a little healthier, drop a couple pounds, so they go on a diet. And the eating disorder uses that as an opportunity to present itself and to become an obsession. And that innocent diet turns into an eating disorder. I think a lot of us, we have instilled in our minds, I don't know where we get this, you know, this thought from, but if I lose weight, I will be happy and I will love myself because I have lost that weight and I am no longer this number of pounds. And this excuse of not liking myself comes from that idea of if I lose weight, I will like myself. And recovery has taught me that if you don't like yourself, in your current state, you're not gonna like yourself when you change it. You have to first like yourself before change makes a difference. With this excuse, it's one of those things where I currently don't like myself, so what do I have to lose? I might as well try recovery because you never know, I might end up liking that new person that I become through recovery because right now I am I'm stuck in an eating disorder and I am miserable I am so miserable that maybe I feel like my life's not even worth living so I might as well do something completely different because maybe I'll feel like my life is worth something by making that change another excuse along the same lines people won't like me for some reason when you have an eating disorder the eating disorder makes you feel like your self-worth is based off your body image, how other people perceive you, when in reality, you've actually made your self-worth based off how you perceive you. But it twists that reality into other people are, you know, constantly judging and criticizing you in their heads. Or they might make like side comments to their friends when they see you. So if I suddenly start eating or I start gaining weight or I start looking healthy, people aren't going to like me because I'm now suddenly, you know, fat and, you know, people don't like fat people or whatever. I won't look cute or I'll become ugly. Again, this goes back to the whole idea that recovery means gaining weight which is true but that's not the whole the whole story of recovery is not just about gaining weight and so when you have an eating disorder you associate you know gaining weight eating food with you know being ugly and being unwanted and being rejected all these things that you don't want to be and you know when you're super super skinny you think, oh, I can, you know, I can wear cute clothes. Like I've earned that privilege to wear cute clothes and get attention from people and people to like me and people to think I'm pretty and, you know, all these things when it really comes down to how you feel about yourself on the inside rather than your outward appearance. Only fat people eat. Like I said, some of these excuses are totally crazy and totally absurd and I think this is one of the big ones that fall under that category only fat people eat even to this day despite how far I've come I have noticed that this thought comes into my mind every ever so often and it throws me because it's like where is this thought coming from it's totally totally crazy like everyone has to eat food is the fuel of life it's how we stay alive it's how our bodies run it's how we get energy to wake up in the morning to you know to reach your goals and you know live your life go to your job you know makes uh, be a success and it's so crazy but the more i've sat down and really 
gone inside my own head and thought about things, I've realized I think some of the craziest things. And this is one of those. Fat people are not the only people who eat. Everyone should be eating. I haven't suffered enough and I don't deserve recovery. I think a lot of people think when they're in an eating disorder or they're trying to recover from an eating disorder and it stems back to the whole you're not sick enough, you're not that bad. And it's like I haven't I haven't been through enough torture to deserve to get better, which is a crazy thought. Again, another absurd one where it's just you don't have to earn recovery. You could have an eating disorder for a week and you still deserve recovery. You could have an eating disorder for a few days and you still deserve recovery. You know, you wouldn't tell, this is an extreme example, but you wouldn't tell someone with a life-threatening disease that they have not you know, they have not suffered enough to get proper treatment. Same with eating disorders, same with, you know, mental health in general, mental issues and disorders. You don't have to suffer, you know, you don't have to hit rock bottom before you can build yourself back up. Some people have to hit rock bottom when it comes to mental issues, but not everyone. If you can face yourself and say, I'm at a point where I I can't keep doing this. I cannot keep torturing myself like this. I need to get better. I need proper treatment. I need support. You don't have to then stay in that state of misery until you feel like you've reached a point where you've earned that treatment, where you've earned that support. When it comes to treatment, when it comes to support from other people and from yourself, Other people are going to willingly want to help you when they see that you're suffering. Other people can recover, not me. I still struggle with this one. I see other people doing really well, and I think to myself, well, good for them, and I'm really happy for them, but I'm me, and I can't do what they did. What would you be like without the eating disorder? Your life is going to be so empty without it. People who struggle with an eating disorder for years, that has become such a big part of their life. And how are they supposed to then fill that empty space once they remove the eating disorder? The eating disorder has become such a prominent, defining part of their life. And I know for me, I felt like I was the girl with the eating disorder. I was the anorexic. That was my defining characteristic. That's what made me special was this eating disorder. And it used to terrify me. I mean, terrify me to tears, panic attacks, just thinking about who am I? Who will I be if I let it go? What what am I without it? What what makes me me if not the eating disorder? And it's a really scary thought and it's really going to hold you back if you keep listening to it and being defined by this disorder. What will preoccupy my time if not the eating disorder? Eating disorders become an obsession. When I first started to recover and I started to let go of some of my really rigid scheduling patterns, I realized I have more time on my hands than I know what to do with. And that scared me because I was so used to just having every second of my day planned. And my plan of the day was around food. And now suddenly I'm letting go of that schedule, of that routine. And now I have freedom. And sometimes when you have been a slave to something for so long, freedom is scary because you it's something you haven't had in a long time and you don't know what you're supposed to do with it. So just thinking about the idea of having this new freedom can be scary and daunting to the point where I'm comfortable in my eating disorder. I might as well just stay where I'm comfortable rather than venture out into the scary unknown. Having an eating disorder makes you unique. I said a little bit ago, without the eating disorder, I felt like I wasn't special anymore. I didn't have that that thing to make me stand out, to make me unique. Everyone has things that make them unique. An eating disorder is not one of those things. An eating disorder is not original. It's not unique. It doesn't make you special. It just makes you dead. And 
I think a lot of people think that having, you know, mental illness in general makes you somehow, you know, special. And, you know, I, I stand apart from the crowd. I hate to break it to you, but the majority of people struggle with some form of mental illness, whether that's an eating disorder, depression, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, anything. Everyone suffers from something doesn't make you stand out. You're not special in any way if you're thinking that a mental illness makes you special. I can live with this eating disorder for the rest of my life. When I was completely submerged in the eating disorder to the point where it really didn't even like dawn on me that I had an eating disorder, I thought to myself, I could live like this for the rest of my life. I can eat like this, which was, you know, very little. And I, I can do this. Like, this is a sustainable way of eating and living. And I convinced myself that it was plausible to keep doing this. I mean, to the day I died. Now, the thing is, it is plausible to continue to have an eating disorder until the day you die. Because the day you die is going to be a lot sooner than if you just gave up the eating disorder. So yes, you can live with an eating disorder for the rest of your life. Your life has just been shortened though because of the eating disorder. I'll be okay and I am okay. We convince ourselves we there is no problem and that's the thing with any addiction. When you're addicted, you want it to stay so bad that you'll convince yourself that you don't have it in the first place. And if you don't have it, there's nothing to get rid of. And you will convince yourself that you are okay. But this is probably the one of the most dangerous excuses you can tell yourself because it is a blatant lie. It is a lie that will hold you back from fulfilling your life. When you start to think I'm okay with this eating disorder when I'm okay with it. I I don't I'm not really sick. When you stop viewing the eating disorder as an illness, an addiction, a disorder and you accept it as a part of your life, you have pulled yourself farther and farther away from a full life. You are basically bowing down to your 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 captor, the thing that is, you know, chaining you up and keeping you from living a happy, healthy life, and you're just giving into it. So the moment you feel like, oh no, I'm okay, I don't need to eat today, or I, I'm okay, throwing up is normal, those kind of things, you need to shut that thought down and realize that this is abnormal behavior. Not only are all these excuses totally absurd, but they are all lies. They're lies that hold you back from living an amazing life. The sooner you realize that they are all lies, the sooner you will start to be able to accept help from others and especially help from yourself. I think it's important to point out the excuses that I mean, personally, I have told myself every single one of these excuses, you know, hundreds of times every day for years and years and years. And I think it's important to vocalize the excuses so that others can start to recognize, oh, maybe I am thinking those same thoughts and I need to work on countering those thoughts because recovery, yes, is hard but it's worth it. It's a fight worth fighting because it's your life on the line. And that that should be something to fight for. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. For more videos about eating disorders, nutrition, and diet, please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. Any criticism is welcome, and I will see you next time. Bye!